Good morning. The proverb says, a word fitly spoken, uh, how good it is. Like to have the right word for the right occasion, how good it is. You know, at the Last Supper, when Jesus is going to the cross and he is going to be mobbed and then treated horribly and then brutally crucified, uh, as his disciples are going to witness this, it's really going to shake their world quite a bit. Things will go into chaos even after the death they're hiding. In, after even the resurrection, they're hiding in a room for fear of the Jews that the same fate will come upon them. They knew it as they went up to Jerusalem. They were saying, when we went up to heal Lazarus, they were saying, they went to stone you, Master. Why do you want to go up there? And Thomas says, come, let us go up and die with him. Because they figured what's in it, what, what, what he gets, we also get. So they had that. It was a kind of a time uh, 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 of real disorientation was going to come. And Jesus knew that, so he took the time to speak to them appropriately. But many things in that last, it's maybe the longest uh, single sermon in the whole of the Gospels. It is five chapters. Of course, chapter 17 is the high priestly prayer. It's a prayer more than a sermon. But the other four, 13, 14, 15, 16, is a long sermon. And it has different kind of pieces to it. Of course, the first washing their feet teach them humility and then after that he comforts them that I am going for a little while away which was that he would go for three days into the grave and he would come back again but in that three days there will be such turmoil in their hearts and turmoil going on around also and so he comforts them with many things and uh, comforts them to say I go and I go and prepare a place for you that he's going to go to heaven and that not only was he going to the cross but soon after of course he would descend to heaven and he would not be with them in his physical presence anymore but that the holy spirit another comforter would come to them and i want to focus on this part then after he comforts them he in in chapter 15 i am the vine you are the branches without me you can do nothing if the branch abides in the vine it bears fruit and he wants him to bear fruit and then he says that you will bear much fruit is my father glorified and then that your fruit would remain so he is expecting fruitfulness for them he has invested a lot in them he has chosen them. the father gave them to him and the father is glorified if they're fruitful it doesn't look good to god nor to christ if they are not fruitful i am glorified the father is glorified if you're fruitful and it's one of the motivations for their fruitfulness. And what is the fruitfulness? The main form of the fruitfulness is that others would come to faith in Christ, that through their preaching of the gospel and through their lives and their love for one another, people would see and people would come to faith and the kingdom of God would grow. And this gospel would go into all the world in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's the fruitfulness he's looking for in it. And he gives then the key to the fruitfulness is abiding in the vine. If you abide in me and my word abides in you. If you abide in me, you will bear fruit. You will bear much fruit. So what does it mean to abide in the vine? Well, take the actual uh, illustration as he meant it. If the branch is attached to the, to the main uh, trunk of the tree, then it can um, uh, bring life. But actually then it needs a second thing, the sap must flow up through the branch and out uh, uh, in, through, through, through the stalk, out into the branch and then it bears fruit. So you need both, you have to stay attached. If you break the branch off, it has no chance. But even if it is attached and there's not a flow of sap into it, and sometimes you get this, you'll see branches on trees and they're actually dead, it happens. And then other times you see branches on trees, they are alive, lots of leaves, but no fruit. And uh, it can happen, a whole tree can have leaves and no fruit. Sometimes a tree can have some branches with fruit and other branches have leaves only. So to bear fruit, uh, and of course he says the Father prunes the branches. That means God the Father disciplines us in certain ways or trains us or instructs us and cuts certain things out of our lives that are not profitable and useful that we bear fruit. So as we said, first it's got to be attached uh, the branch has to stay attached. If it's broken off, it can't do anything. It's got to stay attached. And second, it has to have the flow of life in it. Uh, what does it mean? It means that the Word, you've got to stay in the Word of God. We have to keep the right doctrine. It's so easy. There's so much false doctrine. So we have to keep the true doctrine. 
and keep speaking the true doctrine and keep all wrong doctrine out. And also, we must keep it proportionate. It's very easy to get disproportionate in our doctrine. We're preaching all the time on just one thing. End times, end times, end times, end times, end times, end times. Gives to the Spirit, gives to the Spirit, gives to the Spirit, gives to the Spirit. It's too much. It's got to be balanced. It's got to be proportionate. Everything in proportion. And of course, there are seasons you've got to give a greater emphasis on some subjects than other. So the Word is this first one. The second is the Spirit. We have to maintain the Spirit, the right Spirit. Jesus came full of grace and truth. We have truth. We have the right doctrine. We got it down. Praise the Lord. But now we've got to keep the Spirit. The Pharisees had the doctrine perfect. Their doctrine was you couldn't, you couldn't fault them on it. You tied mint and cumin. Your exit. But on the way to your matters of the law, mercy and justice, you know, F, fail, total fail. A plus on the doctrine, F on your grace and mercy. Peter, in his last words in his epistle, in the last epistle, says, Grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. We are stewards of the doctrine. We are stewards also of the grace of God. It's easier to test the doctrine. You can test it with exams. And listen, but it's harder to test is there grace in the heart? Is there love? Is there mercy? Is there kindness in it? And it's like, like we, we were saying this in class, you can be perfect in doctrine and meaner than a junkyard dog. You can be a Pharisee, perfect in the doctrine and legalistic as can be. So uh, these are the two things if we are going to be fruitful. First, stay attached. Keep the doctrine right. You've got to keep the doctrine right. It's important. But secondly, keep the spirit and we are stewards of both. And if we win on one, we can be like the Pharisees. And as they say, if I am all word, I will dry up. If I am all spirit, I will be puffed up. And if I have word and spirit, I'll grow up. Okay? Amen. Amen.